Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Daniel Hunsaker, uh, and this is Naveen. Uh, we're both from Georgia Tech. We're grad students there, um, and we're basically presenting all of our work that we did within the research lab at the uh, School of Civil Engineering. Uh, basically, our research overview is doing the It's For Us uh, deployment program with uh, the Georgia Department of Transportation. Uh, this is a program that's mainly looking at ADA accessibility, then routing uh, around transit stops and bus stops, then ultimately creating an app for ADA users to use to get around uh, Gwinnett County. Uh, so basically, our our goal is to develop a comprehensive pedestrian infrastructure network in the study area and uh, compile logical path segments that so that impedance can be applied. Uh, within this group, there's about 50 uh, students, uh, graduate students, and then you know undergraduate students. We have three separate teams, one for field data collection, one that does spatial and network analysis, and then another one that does uh, machine vision task. So if you look uh, carefully at that map of the study area, the study area is quite far away from the Atlanta area within Gwinnett County, and then it touches a little bit into DeKalb County where we have the MARTA station, uh, the Doraville MARTA station, which is essentially the end of the line for the red and gold route. Uh, there, uh, people can you know, depart from their, uh, the, the Atlanta area and then go into Gwinnett County using the different uh, bus stops and other areas, and then Gwinnett is looking into implementing a BRT line throughout that entire area. So basically, uh, what we're looking at is just the pedestrian ways within OSM. Uh, OSM con contains a significant number of pedestrian ways uh, where any user can input uh, pedestrian network data. However, the OSM sidewalk network could be incomplete. Within our study area, 70% of the sidewalk miles were actually missing. These networks contain sidewalks that may not be advisable for people who use wheelchairs, like parking lot ways, cut through paths, et cetera. The network quality and associated tags can be highly variable. Uh, and so a variety of technology can be harnessed to actually complete uh, the pedestrian networks and then perform QA, QC. So in this, we're going to look at uh, the different ways that we identify um, different pedestrian assets like sidewalks, curb ramps, curb cuts. Within this, we're looking at uh, vehicle fly-through video, wheelchair, and other ground-level video data, uh, traditional GPS data, and then reconciling data with aerial overflight images, and then looking at new potential technologies that we're going to introduce in our lab with LIDAR and then drone. Uh, within all these technologies that are introduced, we're going to be able to provide everything and all the steps you need for any municipality to kind of implement this within their own community. So within the Gwinnett County study area, there's over 500 miles of sidewalk. Um, it's basically a study area that was kind of made up around the uh, bus stops, uh, what we're calling transit stops here because that also includes the heavy rail line of the MARTA station. Uh, so we have the Ride Gwinnett bus routes uh, as well. And then more than 220 miles uh, of the sidewalk within the area are uh, walkable from the transit stops using the quarter mile uh, buffers. Uh, so a lot of the big problems and setbacks we had within uh, this entire project was that online image data sets and license issues, uh, particularly around Google Street View and Microsoft Bing, uh, the tree side images are great, but you know we only use that within the initial processes of our machine vision team because we had a lot of uh, user license issues uh, within the project. Uh, so they kind of um, prohibit creating and sharing data derived from proprietary images. Uh, so we find that open source image data sets are needed for OSM pathway verification. Considering this license issues, uh, the first step in our field data collection process is the vehicle video collection. Uh, it is comparatively inexp inexpensive than our other methods, but the main goal of this process is to quantify the sidewalk assets that are present in, within our study area so that in the next step we can deploy the uh, wheelchair uh, video inspectors uh, or the field data collectors. Uh, so in this method, we use three GoPro cameras that are fit in the driver's side, the passenger side, as well as in the front of the vehicle. Uh, we also fit a stereo optical camera uh, near the passenger side, uh, which helps in uh, depth perception. So to look at the process itself, 
Uh, we typically process the passenger side video because it's, it is much more closer to the sidewalk. And in this method, we, uh, we have two different categories. One is the manual fly through, where each and every frame of the video collected is inspected by a, a research assistant. Uh, uh, this is more laborious, but we feel that we, uh, since this is in the initial stage of the research, uh, a manual process is required to uh, kind of have it as a ground truth. And then we also have a machine vision fly through where the entire process is automated through machine learning algorithms to kind of identify these assets. So at the end of the vehicle fly through data collection, we were able to quantify our uh, sidewalk assets within the study area based on which the trips were assigned for uh, wheelchair data collection, which Daniel will go in detail. So when we did wheelchair video uh, data collection, we you know went simple on this. We just felt that using a wheelchair to actually collect data was the most accurate way to determine ADA compliance. So basically, if you look at the image, uh, we just have a wheelchair. We removed the seat and changed it with just a flat um, a flat pad that was developed within uh, the civil engineering department that's going to hold basically our two cameras. What we, what we have is a forward-facing camera and then a downward-facing camera, which is going to be used for the machine vision task. We also use safety vests, of course, to be safe, uh, different measurement tools to measure the widths of sidewalks as the field data collectors go through, and then also you know coolers, towels, different things for the collectors to use as they're collecting um, data. Uh, so typical walking speeds, we found that it's about two to three miles per hour, which was very, e which was easy, but also sometimes time, time consuming because that could be variable whenever you're hitting different intersections and having to go through different signals. Uh, so yeah, here's some more images of our field data collectors out in the field. Uh, so within this, this is our study area with our map of uh, the status as of April 5th. We actually ended up finishing this last week and then are working on the data processing right now as we speak. Uh, so there's about you know, 1,200 total road miles and 650 miles have no sidewalks within the study area and then 512 miles have sidewalks. Uh, what we did, if you can see on the map, we defined the sidewalks as connected and um, isolated. That was mainly because of the project scope and everything because we don't want to uh, we, we felt that it was unnecessary to collect uh, sidewalk data on areas that were unconnected. These were mostly small residential developments that were newly built that had uh, certain policies that made them build uh, the sidewalks when they built the house. Uh, so basically when we did the video, uh, when we did the wheelchair video routes and the scheduling, uh, this was all done mostly through Microsoft Excel, using Microsoft Access, and then also using uh, some certain tools in ArcGIS and then more of uh, QGIS as we uh, went through later in the collection process. Uh, we felt that using different kinds of tools uh, would be most beneficial if we're gonna share this data out to the entire world and for other people to conduct this data because if we have different kind of tool sets, it could allow for the most uh, data collection possible. Uh, then we also, you know, as we move further through the wheelchair uh, data collection, we had different issues, like certain sidewalk segments weren't collected because faulty cameras, sometimes data collectors miss the route when you're doing a five mile route, it's very easy to miss a small segment of sidewalk. So then we uh, moved to interactive inspection maps using uh, special Android tablets we had inside the lab and we used RStudio to kind of create an HTML, HTML map using the, uh, the SF package. When we, uh, we also, so through this process, the machine vision team kind of created a video inspection tool just for looking at uh, asset defects. Uh, so this was kind of a re remote video inspection that's still ongoing uh, within the research group. Uh, that's gonna have a map location panel using you know the OSM base map, rolling video images, and then the inspection output. As you can see on the top, the, that's the video from the forward facing camera, and then the video on the bottom is the uh, you know, downward facing uh, video camera. Uh, basically, they click the image to stop the video and then record the different defect data that they find. The inspector can identify about 90% of the design and condition issues, and then those issues are described in there. The, we, so we use the supported browsers of Chrome, Edge, and Firefox to do this, and then basically doing this entire uh, video inspection uh, tool process is just to you know, obviously do a remote video inspection for doing all the different assets, and then 
um, identifying the different issues that are found, and then you know using this to help develop our machine vision model um, using AI. Uh, so after we did those different wheelchair um, the data collection, we moved into uh, manual inspection of the different assets within our area. Uh, so what we looked at was actually sending out field crews to go walk around at different intersections, different pieces of sidewalk to actually identify um, pedestrian crossing, curb, curb cuts, and then ramps, the actual um, measurements of each thing to see if they're in ADA compliance. What we're working on right now over the summer is using special uh, bulky GPS units um, to actually uh, collect the ground truth positions of different assets within the area. These are mostly focused on curb ramps. Um, this is basically giving us a baseline data to which we can compare machine vision process outputs and then uh, use to derive the actual position of the location of it. Um, so these are obviously, you know, specialized GPS units, very bulky, very hard to manage, but with a team of 50 people, it was relatively easy. Um, you know, it, it's very uh, accurate, you know, it gets uh, less than one foot. And then there's about 310 curb ramp positions that were identified in Lawrenceville, which is essentially the county seat of Gwinnett County, um, and also considered our demonstration zone for actually uh, comparing the different assets. So as Daniel mentioned earlier, like we do have a lot of different methods which we have been trying out in the past year to identify these assets, as well as like kind of measure the quality of these, uh, as well as the design flaws. So to bring them all together, we felt OSM's network would be the great way to do it. So associating all these different data points, uh, which we uh, kind of derived uh, through our processes for the different assets, we tend to associate them to the corresponding OSM links. So the method we have created is to associate all the different curb cuts to the corresponding sidewalks and all the ramps which are in the intersections to their corresponding uh, crossing links. Uh, so when we do that, uh, like while using the machine vision process, uh, uh, the number of assets identified through the process is actually variable from what we get from the manual inspection. So at the moment, we are in the process of comparing the accuracy of these different uh, methodologies uh, so that uh, then in the next step, we are working on the, uh, we call it the techno-economic study where we assess the pros and cons of each of these methods as well as the uh, financial burden which comes with each of these methodologies so that when we put, put out the data to everyone's use, uh, it also comes with the estimate of how much it will take for a county or a city to actually implement the process. And based on their need, they can kind of uh, tailor make the process based on their budget availability as well as their needs. Uh, so right now within the works, within the fall semester and then moving into the spring semester at Georgia Tech, we're looking at using new data collection technologies, including what we already tested already, which is mo mobile LIDAR. Uh, so within this, you know, we would use the same kind of wheelchair mount um, and use uh, the different LIDAR testing. This generates a point cloud of distance reading, high scan rate, high resolution, high accuracy. Right now, we're currently in the works of looking at the different power and computing uh, constraints and then connecting it with video data. Uh, doing this is very important to still continue to use a wheelchair because when we're looking at the different vibration data and everything that goes into account of impedance, it's very helpful to continue that same methodology. Right now, we're also still uh, currently in the works of doing uh, drone data collection potential. Uh, you know, this would be uh, very strict, especially in Atlanta, as we must fly within certain height, height constraints, safety issues, minimum and maximum limits, and potentially, you know, Atlanta is known for all its large tree canopy. It's also navigating around certain trees and figuring out how to best collect sidewalk data that way. Uh, also, potential limitations, battery life resolution, data, et cetera. Uh, so basically, OSM is an open source platform to host, you know, accurate representations of the pedestrian network. You know, it's also used in the OTP routing. Uh, pedestrian ways are just incomplete and include quite a bit of uh, variability with respect to the actual accuracy and then the tagging of the different assets. Uh, 
So we're just presenting the different GPS, aerial imagery, video, and other sources that could be used just to identify this and then add infrastructure into that. Um, and then for uh, QA, QC. Uh, we also have to make sure that we have the license to do so, and then the video uh, data collection is actually not terribly difficult, and actually a lot of this that we're presenting is relatively inexpensive for a lot of municipalities to implement. Uh, and then, you know, looking at the different machine vision processes and new technologies that are here. Uh, with this, we already presented some of this to Atlanta City Council members, and they're already interested and on board into uh, implementing some of these data collection processes. And by the end of the summer, we're going to look to publish everything and put it on GitHub, have a wiki page, and everything else um, just to provide this to everybody in the nation and make this uh, implemented. Uh, so yeah, we would like to thank uh, U.S. Department of Transportation, Federal Highways Administration, and uh, Georgia Department of Transportation and the Atlanta Regional Commission, and then everyone else, all 50 members of our team that helped make all this possible. Thank you.